what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel look at this nice and beautiful question on the board that we're going to be solving and the question says find the value of x for which x times x times x all over x plus x plus x is equal to 6. well our first step would be for us to apply the laws of indices to the numerator. For example, the law of indices says when I have a to the m times a to the n, this is equal to I take one of the base and add the powers m plus n. And this is what I have here. Now notice that the bases are the same so I'm going to be taking one of the base which is X then I'll add the powers the power here is 1 power here is 1 and the power here is 1 so 1 plus 1 plus 1 gives 3 all over now on the denominator X plus X plus X is 3 X and this is equal to 6. Our next step will be for us to get rid of this 3. And we're going to be doing that by multiplying both sides by 3. So I'll multiply the left hand side by 3. So 3 times x cubed all over 3x equal to, I'll also multiply the right hand side by 3. So 3 times 6. Now notice that 3 here can cancel off this 3. Leaving behind x cubed all over x to be equal to 3 times 6 is 18. Our next step will be to apply law of indices to what we have on the left hand side. Let's say for example if I have a to the m divide by a to the n as long as the bases are the same the law of indices says take one of the base and subtract the powers so you subtract powers when there is division so let's apply this to what we have here so notice that the bases are the same so i'll take one of them x and i'll subtract the powers the power here is one so subtracting three minus one is two and this is equal to 18. our next step will be for us to get rid of this square and we do that by taking the square root of both sides so i'll take the square root of the left hand side which is x squared and I'll also take the square root of the right hand side but when taking the square root of the right hand side I'll put plus or minus before bringing out the square root of 18 so now notice that square root can cancel out the square leaving behind x to be equal to plus or minus the square root of now 18 can be split into a perfect square and another factor so the perfect square is 9 times 2 so 9 times 2 gives 18 simplifying further we have x to be equal to plus or minus this expression is same as the square root of 9 times the square root of 2 so this gives x to be equal to plus or minus the square root of 9 is 3 so 3 times root 2 is 3 root 2 so we have two values for x we have x to be equal to the positive 3 root 2 or x is equal to taking the negative this is negative 3 
root 2. Now let's check. So on checking, this is our question. We're going to be going with the positive answer for x first. So this is 3 root 2 times 3 root 2 times 3 root 2. Divide by, now the denominator, 3 root 2 plus 3 root 2 plus 3 root 2. Now, from indices, remember, the basis must be the same. And as long as they are multiplying, you are the powers. So let's apply that here. So this gives 3 root 2. That's taking one of the base. And add the powers. So the power here is 1. Power here is 1. And the power here is 1. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. All over. Now, what I have here, 3 root 2 plus 3 root 2 plus 3 root 2. There are 3 of them. That's 3 of 3 root 2. Let's move forward. Now notice that this power of 3 is affecting the 3 and it's also affecting the square root of 2. So this is 3 cubed. 3 cubed is 27 times the square root of 2 raised to the 3. All over. Now 3 times 3 root 2 gives 9 root 2. So 9 here, 1. 9 here gives 3. So we have 3 times the square root of 2 cube all over the square root of 2. Now we can apply the law of indices to what we have here by taking one of the base since they are the same. So this becomes 3 times the square root of 2. Now notice that the power on the numerator is 1. And because they are dividing, we subtract the powers. So 3 minus 1 is 2. Now notice that square can cancel off square root. So that we have 3 times 2, which gives 6. And this is what we have on the right hand side. So the answer of 3 root 2 is a tick. Now let's go for when x is negative 3 root 2. Remember our question is x times x times x all over x plus x plus x is equal to 6. So going for the negative, we have negative 3 root 2 times negative 3 root 2 times negative 3 root 2 divide by now negative 3 root 2 plus making this one to be minus which is minus 3 root 2 plus another negative 3 root 2 makes it to be negative 3 root 2. Now let's apply indices to what we have on the numerator. Take one of the base, negative 3 root 2, and add the powers. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. All over. Now on the denominator, we have negative 3 root 2, negative 3 root 2, negative 3 root 2, which gives negative 9 root 2. Now this power affects negative 3. And it also affects root 2. So negative 3 cubed gives negative 27. And then I have the square root of 2 cubed all over negative 9 root 2. Now negative can go off. So 9 here, 1. 9 here is 3. So we have 3 times root 2 raised to the 3 all over root 2. Now applying the law of indices to what we have here, we have 3 times the square root of 2. Now remember, 
the power here is 1. And when they are dividing, we subtract powers. So 3 minus 1 is 2. And notice that the square root can go off with a square. So that we have 3 times 2, which result to 6, which is also equal to the right hand side. So the positive value for x and the negative value for x is a tick. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.